Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob and I paid three web developers on Fiverr to make me a website. Let's see how they did. I've been a web developer for about 10 years now and I've done my fair share of contract work. Fiverr, if you didn't know, is a website that allows you to post different services that other people can come and purchase, like posting a contract job. People use it for logo designs, voice acting, and in my case, I'm using it to find web developers. I paid for three different gigs. I told them to create a personal website for the imaginary Instagram influencer, Jacob Clark. I thought that I was just picking a random name, but later my friends told me Jacob Clark is a football player. Well, Jacob, I have a few websites for you. You're welcome. Here's what I gave the developers to work with. I sent them this self-aggrandizing paragraph about my impressive, non-existent Instagram account and links to all my hottest social media profiles, including MySpace, which is really popping off right now. Finally, I gave them these two random stock images, this incredibly poorly mocked up design concept complete with spelling mistakes, and this logo. There's a reason I'm a web developer and not a designer. Anyways, I sent them these resources. Let's see how they did. Let's take a look at the first developer, Zohaibarshad113 for $7. For $7. I'm going to stop right here. $7 for any sort of development work is crazy low. Typically, you can expect to pay upwards of $40 an hour for a contract web developer, so this price point is absolutely ridiculous. I'm expecting little to no effort, and probably heavy use of pre-made templates and libraries like Bootstrap and jQuery. But let's see how he did. Okay, so we're going to start with this um, $7 website here. I have it open, and I have a little uh, Python web server running here so that we have it on our local machine and let's head over and see how it looks. So this is our loading experience. You'll notice that we had a little bit of a loading animation here. For this light of a website, I'm going to say, go out on a limb here, we probably don't need that. A um, little fancy, nice to have for a website that might take a little longer to load. Again, this is local, but you know, really the heaviest thing on this website is probably this background image. And uh, you know, that can be optimized. Okay, the next thing I'm noticing here is this uh, header text. Um, I, I actually didn't give this seller the logo that I designed, whoops. Um, but this header text is not centered vertically on this uh, nav bar, but you know, it's fine. This is also probably a template based on when I scroll here, um, we see like uh, this, this header or this nav bar here rather. It kind of goes from being in a static position on this website to once we scroll just far enough, it kind of comes down, animates down, and then it has a fixed position here. And I seriously doubt that for the amount of time this developer put into working on this website for that he was getting $7 for. Um, you know, that's probably something that came with whatever package he's working with here. Um, let's see. Okay, so this background image looks really nice. I like that. And... All right, so here we come down to this little about me section. It is nice that we have the, these different header links here. Yeah, so about me, hello. I I did have a typo here. That's my fault. I put that in the uh, Word document that I sent them. So that's that's my fault. But then we have this dummy email address. And let's see, this is really nice. So we have these icons for the various social media profiles I provided. All of them are just fake links. They don't actually go anywhere. They're random. Uh, just I just basically slam my... Uh, hand against the keyboard to generate these links. Um, but then we do have this MySpace link here. And I did talk to this developer over the chat because whatever icons they were using, uh, he didn't have a MySpace icon, which, you know, in the, today's day and age is pretty understandable. Um, but let's see where he actually ended up getting this because if you look here really closely, that looks like um, a little bit fuzzy, so I'm thinking it's not part of this icon font. So let's see, um, this icon font that he's using, ti-instagram. I mean, just see there, uh, it says image source here. This is actually coming from, this is basically hotlinking this image from a different host. I would not, I would not recommend that you hotlink images, uh, in something that you're delivering to a consumer, especially because like 
Well, I don't know what Icons 8 is, what their license is. Maybe they allow hot linking, um, but you know, it, it could have um, potential downsides. For example, if this ever goes down, then my icon is just gone and I don't have recourse there. So it, it would be better for this to be hosted locally. I do remember asking him to ensure that this is mobile friendly. So let's see what happens if we just size this down. Yep, sure, we do get this nice hamburger menu here. Not exactly necessary for a website of this complexity. You know, two sections where you can already kind of see both sections on the page at the same time. Uh, we do have some breakpoints here. Um, that looks, that's probably bootstrap. You know, we'll take a look at the source code in just a sec. Um, but we could use a little bit more margin between the header there and the image. All right, so let's take a look at the source code really quick and see if we can figure out what theme they're using because this is obviously not all written by hand. You know, he, he got this to me in less than 24 hours, so he's almost certainly using a theme. Let's see, so we have a bunch of CSS here, CSS plugins. Oof, this is a lot. Whoa, this is heavy. Yeah, this is definitely not necessary for a website of this weight. Oh, theme name. What have we got here? Yeah, so, so we probably bought this from Envato Market for $17. You know, I paid him seven for this website. Sounds like he's getting his money's worth. He only has to do uh, one or two more of these, and he has paid off his uh, investment in this HTML theme. So then this is probably all copied from that theme as well. Again, this is way more CSS than you'd need for a website of this complexity. This is really simple, single page. Okay, let's see, is this handwritten? You know, this is commented out. This might be handwritten HTML. That's also commented out, might be handwritten. Um, see if we can, ha if there are any other like telltale signs that this might actually be handwritten HTML instead of a generated or something like that. Um, I'm gonna say it's probably, probably uh, came with the theme and is just mildly edited or just a little bit edited by hand. You know, jQuery, Popper, Bootstrap, another library, and custom. Ooh, this is interesting. Um, this might be handwritten. Um, you know, oh, okay, single side. So it looks, so this was a real estate HTML template. Probably this is custom JavaScript that came with the theme. This is probably not handwritten specifically for this website. I don't see anything that looks particular to this website, no. All right, so that is our $7 website. Oh, let's check it on a different browser as well. Yep, uh, looks good, looks good. And it sizes down just fine. Okay, so $7 website, worth the money? Absolutely, $7, totally. <laughs> this is... Uh, above and beyond what I would expect for $7. All right, on to the second developer, Shabazz1484, at $12. What can I say, I'm a poor college student. Again, this is a ridiculously low price point. I'm not expecting very much. Um, this one really actually looks like he took the uh, terrible, sorry, terrible uh, website design. Looks like he really took that to heart. He even has the uh, Underline, italicized, bold, expensive here. Again, this was copy-pasted, has my typo here. Sp please send sponsorships requests to my fake email. Um, ooh, oh, that's not good. So this appears to be a hash link. That should be mail to. Let's check in on this one. Was this mail to? That is mail to. Yes, this should, that's a mistake. That should be a mail to link there. Um, the rest of these links, look like they're good. I notice he didn't use icons there. Again, that's, I don't expect much for $12. Um, copyright, I would expect my name to be spelt correctly, however. Um, okay, so this is really lightweight, pretty bare bones. Again, for $12, exactly what I'd expect. Take a look at the source code here, though. See what we have going on. All right, so we have bootstrap. My guess is that's for, what, breakpoints, probably? Yep, yeah, looks like they're using some bootstrap breakpoints here just for making the website a little bit more responsive. How does, yep, yeah, okay, that stacks. Almost definitely bootstrap in uh, action there. Uh, font awesome, some Google fonts, jQuery popper and bootstrap. That is, seems to be the standard for these more inexpensive websites. 
All right. Hmm. Okay. Not just a ton going on there. Something I would actually like to compare across these different websites though. So if we come over here over to our network tab and refresh this page, let's see how heavy this website is. So this one comes in weighing in, so this is the $7 one. It comes in weighing at just over two megabytes. This is heavy. And this website, let's see. This one is not even a megabyte yet. That's pretty good. Well, I mean, for, I guess, comparing it to two megabytes is pretty good. But again, for a website of this simplicity, we should be looking at, let's see, I suppose the images are probably the biggest thing here. Yeah, about 500 kilobytes worth of images. Um, but we still shouldn't have nearly 500 additional kilobytes worth of text. That's not warranted for a website of this complexity. But anyways, yeah, that's our $12 website. Oh, and let's check it in another browser. How does that, oh, uh-oh. So this looks different in Chrome. We have this underline here. So you need to cross browser, check your styles here a little bit. Um, and then margins. Okay, so this one is not the same cross browser. Good to know. And finally, I dropped a whopping $32 on the third developer, Jahan Zaib Ahmad. Honestly, if you're developing a single page website for somebody, this is the least you should be charging. And on to our $32 website. Got this one up and running in our little Python server here. And let's reload that page, see how it looks. Okay, so this one also has that loading animation again. Um, for a website of this complexity, probably not very necessary. But this one, you can see like a marked difference between these two websites. This one um, is pretty much just a static website. You can see this one has a little bit of interesting stuff going on with the scroll. They have like a little parallax effects there. Um, that looks kind of nice. Makes it look very um, well done and professional. This one also is probably done with a the theme. Um, I can't remember how long this one took. I think this one took a couple days, but it was over the weekend, so I don't know. Um, all right, so let's take a look. See here, we have some icons. Could probably do with a different color of hover effect here. The red is really not, it's kind of clashing with the uh, theme of the rest of the website. Maybe just go for maybe a background or maybe just like to a gray, maybe. Maybe a blue could work. I don't know. I'd have to tinker around with that bit, but we're not doing that here. We're just uh, looking. Um, again, this is probably a theme, but um, yeah. All right, so there's our MySpace icon. We just got a person. Okay, interesting. Um, let's take a look in our developer tools and see what's going on here. How much does this guy weigh? All right, 1.13 megabytes. What are we pulling in here? So we have a couple images, of course, that are pretty big. Hmm, template Mo style. I wonder if that's where we got our template from. Google fonts, smooth scroll, lots and lots of stuff coming in. And um, let's take a look at this now. Yeah, this is, this is all something that just came with a theme. Not terribly interesting. I wonder if this is handwritten HTML. Um, typo there, possible. Oh, this, at least this was probably written by hand. So we have uh, tags that are closing in the incorrect order. That probably wouldn't be part of a, uh, a theme. Probably wouldn't come like that. So this was probably handwritten. Whenever you see these important rules, sometimes they appear in libraries, but I would, uh, this is probably handwritten. And then we have just a ton of JavaScript down here. Okay, again, so we don't really need a preloader for a website of this weight. That's not necessary, especially especially a one second delay. That is too much. Uh, one second is a long time when it comes to website loading times. You don't wanna be spending one second waiting for a loading animation to disappear. Pretty much it. I don't recommend forcing smooth scroll on a website. Um, that's configurable via browsers and you, don't want to be playing with something that users are usually accustomed to uh, customizing themselves. Oh, oh, nice. Okay, something else I noticed here is that the, these are actually uh, three periods that might be part of the theme. Actually, it probably is, um, but I, I guess I would have tried to do that as either um, 
SVG or an image or just some CSS there before just doing three periods. All right, let's see how this one scales. Okay, look, we got our nice hamburger menu here. That looks good. Anything in the middle? Oh, okay, this is not good. So we have, that's actually quite a big issue. Um, we see our nav bar here. And as we scroll down, that disappears. It's still there. It's still like my, my cursor is still turning into a pointer there. Um, but because it's white, you can't see it. Okay, so we need to add background color to that or some way to make that visible still. You can see it still reappears here. That is not good. That's actually quite an issue for screens that are in the middle between, you know, this size and, and a phone size. That's actually quite an issue. The image is big enough to fill in this space here. What are you doing? And um, how does that look in this other browser here? Oh, so is this a, is this cross browser ish? Yeah, it is. Okay, so this website just doesn't work in Firefox. That's the problem. Uh, we see, we are able to see the, uh, it turns black and has a white background when you scroll down far enough now. Okay, so that's just a cross browser issue. Interesting, but we still have this uh, extra gap here. Our image is, is big enough to fit that. All right, so that was our $32 website. All right, so all in all, what do I think about how our uh, Fiverr web developers did? And to be perfectly honest, they did great. Uh, I can't expect uh, too much to go into a website that I'm paying $7 for, $30 for, even even $50, you know, that's, that's just starting, you know. That's just starting levels. I, I I would expect for a really a professionally done uh, personal website to cost upwards of a hundred dollars. Um, again, depends on the developer. Depends on how much effort they're putting into it. But for seven dollars, this website, that's totally worth it, a hundred percent. This one, you know, a little bit more basic, but I I cannot expect uh, a, a an amazing website with tons of effort put into it for $12. Another thing I would like to point out, something else I noticed, is that um, this I should be capitalized, that is capitalized in my very terrible uh, image that I gave them for the website concept. So that should be capitalized. And another thing was, um, if we take a look at this image, uh, for some reason, um, if we look here, my logo is actually included in the source files for this website, but for some reason it was just never used. Um, I did not give the logo to this website uh, developer, but I did give it to both of these other two and neither of them seemed to use it. In the end, these developers exceeded my expectations for what I should have been able to get for the money I paid in terms of a website. What did you think about how they did? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and have a good one.